Mohamed Zatre lives a divided life, dominated by the architecture and bureaucracy of occupation. If I have get here, five minutes in, in my family. He was born just outside Jerusalem's eastern limits, so his ID papers are those of a Palestinian from the West Bank. But he lives in occupied East Jerusalem, with his daughter and wife, both of whom have Jerusalem IDs. Mohammed has to apply for a special military permit every 12 months just to live in his own home. At any moment, they might tell you that you have to leave, you are not welcome. His wife, Hanadi, can only wish for the chance of permanent secure status. We would have more freedom. He could work easily, move easily, travel and live daily life more easily. Unlike when you don't have anything and you're afraid all the time, scared. Across occupied East Jerusalem, thousands of families have been put in this position by a temporary law that has to be renewed every 12 months. The question for them is whether the political shift inside Israel could ease that burden on them. Israel's new right-wing Prime Minister Naftali Bennett leads a government that contains left-wing and Palestinian Israeli parties who are set against voting to extend the law. This is a trap for him because it, it's not a law which is on the books. It's an emergency action that was taken in 2003 at the height of the Second Intifada, when there was real proof that people who had used the family unification actually were engaged in terrorist activities against Israel. That's not the case today. Now the new opposition leader, Benjamin Netanyahu, is also threatening to vote against it, to deal an early defeat to the government. If they don't want to give citizenship to 15,000 Palestinians, they have to abstain. We never had right-wing national parties voting against this law. For campaigners against the law, such comments reinforce the view that it's about demography, not security. You hear that the law is necessary for security and to maintain Israel as a Jewish uh, dem democratic state. So that should be uh, uh, suspicious to everyone. You know, when you are hearing these two justifications, uh, you have to call into question, is it essential only for security reasons? Even if the law is prevented from lapsing, campaigners hope it may be amended, perhaps exempting at least elderly couples. But that would still leave Mohammed living a restricted life. No Israeli health cover, no driving license, no real peace of mind, even at home. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera, Occupied East Jerusalem.